good evening to all uh please anyone clear uh, respond that if i am audible yes sir okay thank you is the shared screen uh, visible right yes sir okay, yes, sir. okay, okay. yeah thank you we'll wait for five more minutes i think uh, some more uh, may join after that uh, i will continue
I think we shall see two more minutes. Then I will start. Okay, I think I will start now. Yeah. So in the previous classes of fruit science, we were uh, uh, we were covered about uh, basics of pomology, and uh, in the last class, uh, I think my sorry, mango has covered. And uh, yeah, today vegetable uh, will not be able to. She won't be able to take class now. So hence today I will take. And uh, tomorrow and after tomorrow, I think probably. Uh, one class may shift and uh, to Sunday, and uh, I think uh, I, I'll handle both of the classes on Sunday or whatever. I will inform in group, okay? Don't worry. And don't worry about the missing classes, okay? Everything will be covered uh, uh, before uh, the scheduled times. So, no need to worry. <clears throat> so, okay, moving forward with banana. So, after mango, uh, we know that banana is one of the very much uh, important crop with respect to uh, area production productivity. And also uh, with respect to the, uh, what is that, uh, seasonal availability or usage utility, uh, it is used everywhere. I think this is the only fruit crop which uh, we will, it, it, it will be available in throughout the year in the market. Okay, mangoes in, comes in summer, summer and mango grapes and all come in summer and some temperate fruits in the winter. So, but in, uh, <clears throat> but in everywhere, bananas will be available. So in one or the other way, we will be using uh, uh, banana for even for consumption or for doing puja or anything. So, uh, okay. So we will uh, discuss about banana. <clears throat> I'm audible, right? I'm audible and... Uh... Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. If any interruptions happen, means so you please let me know. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, it is botanically called Misa Paradisiaca. And we all know that uh, it belongs to family Mysaceae and origin is southeastern Asia. And also in some uh, uh, in some literature, it is mentioned as Indo-Malayan region. However, both are same, southeastern Asia or Indo-Malayan region. And the chromosome number, we all know that the basic haploid number is uh, x equal to 11. And uh, sorry, haploid number is n. And the basic chromosome number that is x, x equal to 11. And 2n equal to 3x, the cultivated bananas are triploids. That is natural triploids between hybrids between uh, Musa Akimunata and Bulbisiana. So they are, uh, <coughs> the cultivated bananas are uh, to n equal to 3x equal to 33. And uh, this is the one of the important thing that we should know the synonyms of banana. It is called with several names. That is Kalpataro. Its meaning is plant of virtue. That means whatever we ask, it will grant. So like that. So in what is Kalparuksha? Uh, okay, coconut. Uh, in plantation crops, Kalpavriksha is coconut. Riksha means you know, it's a big tree. And uh, kalpa taro, taro means taro refers to plant. So banana is a herbaceous monocot, uh, monocot plant, no? So however, coconut is also monocot, but uh, uh, by the growing habit, so it's a plant of virtue and uh, called as kalpa taro, and uh, the coconut is called as kalpa ruksha. So it's also called as tree of paradise, tree of wisdom, apple of paradise, Adam's fig, and also antique fruit crop. So you have to remember all these names. This is not, uh, not only with respect to banana. So whatever the crop may be, 
so you please remember whatever how many uh, irrespective of the how many number of uh, common names or uh, synonyms it will be having you just have to memorize everything so because in one of one or the other way it will be asked uh, uh, there might not be a question of uh, a banana is also called as dash no no but some of the things like uh, uh, adams fig uh, the, the, the something like uh, uh, this one of the cultivar and they will give the cultivar and they will give uh, it as a uh, uh adam's fig uh, the cultivar of adam's fig is uh, like that it may be given so who knows yeah you should be aware of all the other uh, synonyms of uh, th this crop or, or any particular crop <laughs> moving forward it's it's a staple food in many african countries we know, uh, we know that no even now even in uganda eritrea and some other parts of even uh, not only east and west africa in uh, many parts of the world even in uh, south india southern parts of india it is uh, consumed as uh, uh, as a as a cooking type it is consumed as a staple food with uh, having the calorific value of 67 gram of out of 100 grams and it is free from sodium easily digestible and hence, hence it is suitable for all age groups the teams that means no uh, i think yeah only you just you just get energy no sodium means no no side effects from for no side effect of sodium to the what is that patients if if the people suffering from uh, blood cholesterol or uh, blood pressure issues uh, high sodium intake is not uh, recommended right so banana will not be having so you will get the energy out of uh, 100 grams 67 you will get 67 grams of uh, calorie equivalent that is it is it yields more energy hence the sports people whenever uh, if any of you have participated in sports and yeah uh, the, uh, they will be giving on training only banana only no other food crops are given easily digestible because of the starch content starch and sugar you know uh, uh, starch content and also fibrous content it will be easily easily digestible and hence it is also used as, used as baby food it is used to make powders and also some uh, from child to uh, old age groups you know, it, it suits to all the people hence it is suitable and uh, the beverage made that is m bege i don't know how they pronounce or how it, it has to be pronounced but you just note down m e e g e this is one of the beverage earlier the the one of the traditional beverage made by the chaga people of tanzania so please note down the points i have already told that uh, the notes uh, sharing of notes may be delayed uh, i think i will mm, i'll try to cover uh, i'll try to give the notes uh, in this weekend of all the covered classes but hence however you please note it down moving forward utility we all know that it has wide range it has got wide range of utility the flower is eaten raw or cooked in southeastern asian parts the pseudo stem the the, uh, the what is that the uh, the trunk portion uh, the inside inside the, uh, the directly they won't use the pseudo, pseudo stem but the core of pseudo, pseudo stem is used it's used for cooking in myanmar and not only in myanmar and west bengal every in i think uh, many parts of the uh, india it is used and corn the the rhizome it is a rich source of starch and it is eaten in the times of uh, famine in africa and asia because it's a reserve of uh, uh, starch no, that, that that gives the uh, what is that De development the strength to the development of new plants hence it will be a mine of uh, uh, source of calories and uh, good uh, carbohydrates and the ash of leaves were used to flavor curries and also used as a salt substitute and uh, fibers from pseudo stem is used for making clothes and fibers from leaf they are also the fiber nowadays uh, nowadays uh, uh, the fiber extraction and uh, uh, the texture and making it as uh, as a textiles is has become the mainstream uh, nowadays even i have got i have seen that so many uh, in the recent agriculture fair that is krishi mela uh, many of the shirts and pants were were made from actually pseudo stem that is fibers of banana so in this way it's mainstreaming Soda stem is for cloth making and for leaf strings and rope making and paper making it also go for paper making industry for making tea bags coffee bags and uh, even for currency notes i don't know in which country they will use this or uh, yeah and also in cigarette filters and also medicinal disposal paper paper sorry and uh, other writing papers and the sap of some cultivars that is fey cultivars have distinct reddish violet color and used as inks and dyes so even the sap that is sap no yeah when you cut the pseudo stem uh, there will be using out of uh, uh, a fluid like substance and this is used this is colored and it is used as inks and dyes and the root sap even the root saps so both uh, sap of shoot and root have got the uh, different uh, utility also and the root sap is also used for uh, uh, treating any mouth infections mouth ulcers and also the skin warts 
and banana peel has got antibiotic properties. Uh, this is one of the thing that we have to accept that the peel is more nutritious than what is that uh, uh, the edible portion we consume now. So many uh, vitamins uh, and any other uh, other minerals are uh, so the edible portion is just a rich source of carbohydrates and other minerals are other nutritive uh, elements are very low. But the peel has got very much uh, more nutrients than the what is that flesh. So hence it is called as kalpatura. You know every each and every part it has got utility and even the leaves they are used for. Uh, uh what is it? it is used as a biological plate i sorry i have i'm forgotten to mention that in uh, in this slide i will add it and i will give, i will give it don't worry so leaf is used as a biological plate everyone knows knows that in south india especially we people any of the functions or ceremonies ceremonies uh, in that uh, the it is one of the main thing we will consume the food in uh, the banana banana plates and uh, coming to origin distribution, this is uh, what I, I was referring as uh, Indo-Malayan region. So the Malaysian region, uh, not Indo-Malaya, not implies to India, but it is of it implies to Indian Ocean. So Indo-Malayan, this is uh, uh, the Indian Ocean, and this is the Malayan archipelago. Archipelago means group of islands. Some uh, uh, here and there, it is uh, widely distributed. Uh, so this is the one of the uh, distribution uh, of the banana species that is. The red color indicates Miss Acuminata and uh, the blue ones are Balbisiana in that it have it have originated, it has made, it has undergone several crosses, hybrids naturally, and also several mutations. Huge number of huge times of mutations and also have, have been gone, uh, have been occurred in banana. Hence, we have got very much complicated, uh, what is that, genomic uh, groups in banana. So I will be dealing with them, don't worry. So it has origin, got origin Southeast Asia or Indomalayan region. So that Malayan region implies Malayan archipelago, Malayan peninsula, including the Philippines and uh, New Guinea. And secondary center of origin is being India. This is one of the thing you have to remember. India is one of the secondary center of, not one of, India is the secondary center of origin. And also uh, the Indian subcontinent is the major center for hybridization. That, is, that means uh, it has got hybridized and have been uh, noticed that so many, so many, too much amount of diversity has been present in this region, that is Indian subcontinent. So it is one of the major center of hybridization. Though the species have been originated here, but uh, in the Indian subcontinent region, it has got uh, widely, what is that, diversified. So hybrid of, uh, yeah, the cultivated banana is hybrid of Miss Acuminata and Balbisiana, we know that. And uh, this is one of the important things. What are the, the characters that uh, this Musa paradisiaca is imparted from Acuminata and Balbisiana? So the Parthenocarpic characters and sterility characters are uh, have been uh, taken by um, the parent Musa Acuminata and the hardiness, drought tolerance, and disease resistance and starch in it. Uh, that is what are all the quality parameters. So those are been uh, those characters have been uh, taken from Musa Bulbisiana. So please note it down. Musa Acuminata, Parthenocarpic and sterility characters, and Bulbisiana hardiness, drought, drought tolerance, disease resistant, and also starchiness. So the secondary center of, uh, of diversity includes East and West Africa. So here we have uh, three points should be here. Origin, this Indo-Malayan or Southeast Asian region. Uh, the uh, Indian's major center of hybridization is the uh, Indian subcontinent. Secondary centers of diversity is East and West Africa. And secondary center of origin is India. Okay. And also the Kimineta, Balbisiana, the contribution. So it is noted that in based on literature, the plantains reached banana, so I mean the plantains, they are cooking banana. So they reached the West Africa from the Indo-Malayan region and uh, in the uh, since 3000 years ago. And with the written reference of banana in Sanskrit literature, it can be found in uh, the texts of Sanskrit, uh, even of uh, which date back to 500 BC. And bananas grown in Southeast Asian region, even prehistoric period. I, I, I think, yeah, this is one of the appropriate word to mention. I think we, we will not be seeing any record of exact timeline because even in the uh, Sanskrit shlokas and all, even we, while we're doing puja, no, in the uh, Ganesh festival and all, there, there is a clear cut indication of this uh, uh, banana. So those texts are, I think, thousands of years old. So I think we cannot date exactly uh, which is the exact time, but. Yeah, we have to assume that uh, it, in the before a prehistoric period only, the cultivation has been uh, popularized and it has given a, a prominent role. Uh, and Arabs introduced banana from India to Palestine, that is uh, uh, Israel, Israel part, and also Egypt, that is Middle Gulf and uh, those countries. 
so the arabs carried uh, this banana from india and introduced there where uh, so in the palestinian egypt in 17 sorry in the 7th century ad and the world's most widely distributed cultivar is dwarf cavendish and uh, you, whatever we eat no on that uh, grandin and uh, um, uh, i don't know what is called in your places but here we call pachabade uh, dwarf cavendish that uh, genine bananas so they are uh, one of the most widely distributed cultivar and is derived from the group of clones from multiple parents and mutations formed subgroups so in this this is the main group and there are several subgroups in the cavendish banana so the, it ha you have to remember one thing is because the variations and uh, these subgroups and all existed because of the uh, mutations and also hybridizations occurred multiple in multiple times parallelly so this is that is one of the reason that uh, uh, that's why the, uh, which uh, for which the banana has got more diversity so here the distribution of musa uh, banana genetic diversity in india so here you can see uh, whatever the parts uh, of the country what are the types are distributed acumenata bulbisiana uh, this is not important for exam point of view but for for your general idea I'm, i am uh, for the sake of general idea it has to be remembered it has to be known so in it yeah, i will tell those in detail so this is one of the very 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 important thing you have to uh, 100% remember this thing so uh, the classification or the the lineage of banana so the family it belongs to family musaceae what are the genus of musaceae and what are the sections are present and among them what are the species so the wild banana species is called musa ingens okay so here the musa musaceae it consists of three genus that is ensete musa and also musella so we know that musa x equal to 10 or 20 and uh, ensete 9 10 or 11 and musella so musella has got only one species so you have to remember this musella only uh, in the family musaceae it has got three species three genera and in the three genera only musella has got only one species that is musella lasiocarpa and in the ensete there are six to seven species and the important one being ensete ventricosa so and coming to the, our cultivated type that is musa musa paradisiac or whatever uh, the uh, bananas uh, there are four i uh, i think one two three four five sections uh, uh, in the in the musa first one being australia musa calimusa emusa rhodocalamus and also incerticides so these are the species uh, that is corresponding to so those sections so australia musa bears the textile uh, i mean the fiber yielding species that is musa textilis musa fahi musa mecali uh, uh, i think the, uh, at this level not remembering all these things are not essential but you have to remember the textilis coccinia uh, for that belongs to calimusa here also there are uh, uh, these sections have got uh, 5 to 7 species 10 to 15 species and all and what is the uh, wild banana no it belongs to the section Inserticides, hence uh, here it is there, uh, Musa engines. And Roda Calamus consists of Musa ornata or Musa velutina. And uh, the E Musa, the, this bears our uh, uh, parents of our cultivated bomb, that's Musa accumulator, Musa malvisiana, and Musa buscho. Uh, one of the important character of buscho is that uh, it is uh, easily, the uh, skin is easily peeled. So I will give the list of uh, uh, those, the characteristic uh, features of the species. Don't worry about it. So this is yeah one of the important I said no the only one genera that is uh, only one species in Musella genera that is Musella lasiocarpa. This is one of the Musella lasiocarpa uh, ornamental. I think it is used for ornamental purpose. And these are the some of the species that, is, that belong to E Musa, uh, Musa acuminata subspecies Bunxi, acuminata, and uh, yeah some of the subspecies of uh, E Musa. So this is of uh, Bulbisiana. And Musa Basju, and this is Acuminata subspecies Zebrina. So these are the ones for Australia Musa. You know, Australia Musa bears the fiber yielding types and also ornamental types. So this uh, uh, belly is almost red shaped. Musa Jacke and Musa Textilis. Rodo Calamus, it is, this is also one of the uh, ornamental species, Musa Ornata and Musa Velutina. And coming to its taxonomy, uh, the word Musa is derived from the Arabic word. So, I have said no in the earlier class only whatever the words and uh, their derived uh, parent words the language you have to please note it only in a separate list 
you have to make the separate list of all those things what are the words derived from greek word uh, and yeah greek language or latin language and what is that mm, uh, roman uh, anything that uh, whatever the arabic so you have to in 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 a in a, in a same place only you have to note it down so here comes the arabic word so whatever in whatever the crop the arabic words uh, the uh, the words are derived from the arabic language you have to note it down and put it in the same place so so that it will be remembered for long time so arabic name it is known as m o u z mouse so the word musa it is known as uh, Arab, uh, it is known as mouse in the arabic uh, uh, language and in turn it is applied in the honor of antonius musa it, uh, he was a roman physician we, we don't want all these things so the name banana is derived from the even the genus banana the name of the genus genus is also derived from the arabic name and the name banana that is what we will call no the common name it is also derived from the arabic word it is known as banan which is uh, which means finger <clears throat> even uh, we will call it as finger now finger uh, that is hand for bunch we will call it as hand and a whole uh, section uh, the it is called as yeah bunch of hand and finger and here is the uh, a b genome is there no so musa acuneta is the contributor of a genome and bulbisiana for b genome and uh, yeah this is one of the important which i was saying in the mango classes only uh, simon sun shepherd uh, he was uh, the one who classified uh, and has given the scoring technique in banana <clears throat> so uh, uh, for acuminata he will give one and for bulbisiana if if there are any species so there are characters which are listed okay there are 15 characters listed so in that uh, based on that reference uh, if there are oh, 5 to 10 plants means we will take that list and we will uh, just compare uh, the existing varieties to that list so if there is any character that uh, that is uh, uh, that is similar to misa the list present in the misa i mean the characters of misa acuminata it is given as one and if any of the character that is uh, uh, showing similarities to bulbisiana that is given as five so based on this the scoring is given i'll just show the list once okay this is the list so pseudostem color pseudostem okay the petiole or canal peduncle pedicel ovules there are so like that 15 characters are there so the whatever the characters of musa acuminata are listed here and musa bulbisiana are listed so based on this reference uh, the other cultivars the unknown yeah the unknown lineages are uh, taken and compare uh, it is compared with these things so if any uh, any of the particular variety x is showing uh, this this type of uh, uh, character is petiole or can that is uh, erect margin spreading uh, instead of uh, enclosing so it is given as one okay and coming to a bract shape here the bract shape is the broadly ovate but it is not lanceolate so if the you see it is uh, the showing uh, uh, this musa bulbisiana it is given as five okay based on this uh, uh, to the total of 15 characters how many uh, the score has uh, uh, what score has obtained no so based on that it is judged that it belongs to acuminata group or bulbisiana group okay this is very simple yeah based on the scoring technique cultivars classified as aa triple a ab aab abb double a double b sorry triple a b double a double b and a triple b so i think there was one more okay Okay, I had a, I have included a list of uh, so you know, whatever uh, the DAA uh, has got its score and all. I think it's missing due to technical problem. No, no, don't worry. I will provide it in the. I will include it and send you. So using these genomic symbol, the TAB uh, uh, that corresponding to the body level. So uh, it can be classified either yeah the, the whatever the uh, two uh, what is the genome survey it is diploid and the three is uh, triploid. and uh, in among the hybrids uh, it has got i told it it has got series of hybridization mutations and all so based on these hybrids these are derived that a b a into b a b so if the diploid that is a a and b b are crossed here the gametes obtained are a and the gametes obtained are b so when they are crossed it is a b and also known as apple banana and a a b that is plantain banana please remember this act i think yeah this is one of the toughest thing in the food science so remember the remembering the 
what is that genomic uh, even for me it's still it's the toughest thing i i don't i didn't remember all those things because i think very there is hardly any question asked from this but uh, one of the questions which i encountered was this the plantains banana belong to which group that is a a b okay so like that very very superficially they will ask don't worry about in depth that is what are the what are the total number of uh, what are the genomic types of uh, banana mention of the following uh, Uh, is which one which which cultivar belongs to which group and is highly impossible to remember to that level but for your reference you should uh, you just go through it once but and also yeah, any important ones yeah we know that uh, this uh, bb aa that is acuminata group and bb is bulbaceana okay so and very few are very essential and yes and aab plantain that is also called a sig- silk fig or silk root and uh, those things are superficially remembered okay so here the in the aa aa group triple a group uh there comes the yeah since it's a a a it's emusha uh, akimnata it's noted uh here both wild and cultivated bananas are there in that several subgroups are there i have t- talked in the uh, while uh, discussing about classification no so evolved and uh, uh, the groups have become subgroups uh, sorry groups have got subgroups so here we got the cavendish groups uh, subgroup that contains dwarf cavendish giant cavendish that is williams one of the uh, this is one of the banana which is on par to grand nine actually and grand nine group and it has got several names it is sequita masakya hijau robusta red deca and also dwarf or red banana so so like that i i, I won't be wasting much time on these things okay it is available in the literature you just go through it even if i say all the things you will get definitely confused so okay so just go through once and remember the important thing and gold finger you just remember remember this is gold finger belong to triple ab group okay this is bolder salta for these are the ones which are uh, hybridized artificially i mean by through breeding program i will be telling that okay so double a double b group that is uh, uh, this one also okay don't remember all those things okay so yeah this is this is important i will tell you so the hybridization work it is uh, undergone in banana the breeding was first started in jamaica that is in 1924 and uh, who started the, uh, the hybridization work of uh, mango if you are if you have been listening the mango okay if you have listened okay uh brunson prayag no he started now uh, the those and uh, scientists started uh, hybridization work in uh, mango and uh, here the breeding was started in jamaica in 1924 and uh, they produced artificially two diploids were cla- uh, crossed sorry no yeah and a tetraploid is formed that is ic1 okay artificially produced the hybrid it is uh, the uh, hybrid of gross michel into musa acuminata one of the cultivar of uh, musa acuminata and one is gross michel that is uh, highly resistant to which shown the, which shown the highly resistant resistance to panama wilt disease and other hybrids that uh, included that it, it, this is at the time of 1924 okay other hybrids were ic1 and this is one of the important thing you have to remember which are the first hybrids means ic1 and ic2 usually uh, if you have another one of the fruit science course uh, course and taken noted down the notes and all this is one of the common question ic1 and ic2 are the uh, the first hybrids and j1 and double seven boldest alta for and these other hybrids like uh, this is the boldest sort of part were double four they, they are conti- they are be, they, there are uh, tetraploids actually okay they are, they were found not promising they, they are unstable okay up to triploidy is okay and whatever the breeding occur after that it, they will be you know unstable because too huge number of uh, complicated genome okay so they were not possible uh, i think please also read the basics of genetics and all okay they are very much important hence i will be telling uh, always now you just know only the reading superficial things okay fruit science is fruit science no no it is not the issue it is not that thing you have to applied science is applied science is what basic for horticulture we have to read the uh, genetics and plant breeding you have to read the biotechnology you have to be thorough with the crop physiology and also what is that uh, soil science not not in detail okay in soil science means okay what what, what that come whatever the important things comes huh? okay about minerals what are the nutrient elements the roles functions mobility those are enough okay and breeding what is the main uh, essential p- parts of uh, okay what are the essential uh, things in breeding okay basic is mendelian genetics right from dna replication to whatever the advances in molecular biology that is happened till today the mendelian genetics and also the dna okay dna part dna replication dna base pairs and all if you read it thoroughly that is more than sufficient and breeding okay even the principle the principles of breeding what are the type i mean what are what is it uh breeding methods and what are the uh what is the terminology uh back crossing other uh, uh, single seed descent 
what is the basis for all those things you have to remember those things okay okay if you read those, those things and if you read horticulture whenever if you read horticulture when you get you get doubt that will be cleared okay if you if you have read you have gone thoroughly through that if it is not then it, it will remain as a doubt and we will not look after that okay so this is one of the thing important thing please remember and please read all the things so iita that is international institute of tropical tropical agriculture it is present in nigeria it has also uh, started the uh, it was also started the breeding works that are with the main objective to develop the varieties resistant to cigatoka cigatoka is one of the deadliest and devastating diseases even now the cigatoka and uh, uh, what is it uh, the rostonia solanum serum race 4 those are the ones which are very threat actually even though i think uh, if you have read or not i don't know previously one or two years back there was a report that there is a possibility of extinction of the banana cultivars so you might be thinking why there is a possibility of extinction bananas are grown everywhere so in every each and every country is, it is grown it is exported so we have uh, yeah india is contributing a major area and age, age production is coming from india so how how it how it can be uh, extinct no so because it has, all are growing cavendish groups only that is also uh, with the same if if everyone are grown the same group if there is, if there is any infestation of a pest or disease the entire thing will be devastated so that is the simple thing okay so hence uh, the only the hence it is hence nature has got the biodiversity in within us we have to be it has there are several species that is restricted to several locations and so okay it is not a monoculture is not the thing okay so so i am diverting okay so no need of all those things so other varieties released from uh, iitr that is bit a1 and bit a2 so this is one of the important institute at uh, one of the questions was asked actually uh, where is the what is the, where is the headquarters of uh, uh, this hondoran institute the hondoran foundation for uh, tropical agriculture that is uh, fhia foundation on the uh, hondurans de agricola that is the french name actually so in english when it is translated it is hondoran foundation of agriculture research that is in montpellier it is present in france so this those uh, in uh, the now uh, what is that the where it is from the, those institutes uh, or fhia1 that is hybrids that is of a triple ab group that is resistant to black cigatoka fissure mild and also borang nematodes what is the scientific name of borang nematodes it is rhodophallus similis right and fia2 it is of double a double a so all these are tetraploids so this is resistant to cigatoka and susceptible to fissure mild okay why it happens one is resistant one and one is susceptible so there will be linkage in the genes okay if if one of the other the susceptibility and resistance are very closely linked that means the, those genes are present very near to the chromosome okay if there is a if you do hybridization both will try inherit together so it won't be the separation is not much easier okay you have to remember you have to be i mean you have to have this idea so if the yeah resistant one and susceptible one you have to you have to think yourself while you are reading no yeah and fia3 that is of aa and bb group and fia 17 and fia 21 so all these three that means three fia 3 and fia 17 fia 21 those are resistant to black sea cutoff and for now yeah, that's fuser mill yeah that that was i was talking no fuser mill that is race 4 and uh, crop improvement works in india so udayam was one of the uh, uh, one of the varieties that has got uh, through selection from pisangawak that has got a genome of a double b it has uh, released uh, by nrc banana that is uh, tiruchinappalli in tamil nadu it's an ideal cultivar for wind prone areas so too much of characters is not uh, any one of the contrasting characters of the varieties is only essential here so udayam and uh, next is hybrids that is brs1 banana research station kannara okay brs means banana research station kannara so this is the udayam is of uh, tamil nadu variety and uh, brs1 this is hybrid from uh, kerala and uh, this has this is a triploid and hybrid of agnes for into sanglinin
Am I audible? Yes, sir. So, uh, I think, uh, yeah, please make me host. So, I need it. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. So I think uh, now the screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sorry, I think uh, there was uh, some technical glitch. Uh, this is the one I, uh, I wanted to show you. I think I didn't, uh, yeah, it didn't uh, display in the presentation mode. That AA and AAA that has got a score of 15 to 21. And whatever the score is less now. So those are accumulator. 15 to 21 is usually regarded as accumulator. And above that, above the 20 or 25, it is regarded as bulbician. It is the like, uh, characters are more from bulbician. Okay. So don't worry, I will give it in the notes. So and where were we? Okay. Yeah, we were talking about TA. Uh, okay, CO1, that is, uh, it is a cross, uh, cross of uh, three, three way cross. It was a cross of. Uh, uh, that means double cross. That means uh, one is hybrid, and after for that hybrid, another parent is crossed. It is a cross of Kerala Ladan, and uh, it is of double AB. And uh, this cultivar is uh, Sevai, that is of actually Musa Balbisiana, that is BB. Okay, and Kadali, that is AB. So here, first, Kerala Ladan and Musa Balbisiana are crossed, and uh, the F1 obtained was then again crossed with Kadali, okay, another cultivar. So uh, the resultant was CO1. So in this way, the CO1 was developed. So remember that. And uh, several natural, natural mutants were uh, uh, have been obtained. That is Highgate from uh, Gross Michel. That is, you have to remember this in mutants. Motte Po1, that is of Po1. Uh, Iranka Rastali, that is from Rastali. That is Nanjandu uh, Raspale, that is uh, Rastali. And Vihari Malbok from Malbok. Krishna Walai from uh, Virupakshi, that is Hill Banana. And, uh, Samprani Montan from Montan. Okay, you just no uh, the genomic uh, uh, this thing is not essential. You just note down the what are the mutants. Okay, these are the natural mutants. So coming to the yeah the agronomical practices. So it has go it will uh, it will be growing successfully at the range of uh, a temperature of 15 to 20, 35. That is what typical a uh, climatic uh, in a climatic humid tropical condition it uh, it will survive. And 27.6 degree, uh, that is the, uh, one of the thing why I have put uh, specifically means this is the point that is present in handbook of horticulture. And these, I have encountered this question two times, okay. The specific, in, uh, directly it has been asked, what is the ideal mean temperature for well, 26.7 degrees Celsius. Please remember this. And 50% shade is recommended uh, for grow that. We, we know that it's uh, one of the shade crop that uh, in uh, in our regions, it is uh, actually it is intercropped in uh, in the arecanut uh, and uh, the plantations. But it has it, it, it even it is grown soil crop also. So even you go uh, you, uh, plant it in a soil crop, it will be automatically created the humidity because of uh, the the leaves are large, the the evapotranspiration is more, and hence the humid condition it will automatically generated, and it can maximum stand a measure of eighty percent. And more than that is not beneficial uh, because it favors growth of fungi. Okay, the, it is a water loving plant. We know that, but it's it requires uh, too much of water. But water logging is strictly avoided. Why? Because it it has got it is a monocot crop. It has got very shallow rooted system. So roots are in the superficial only, in the superficial surface only. Okay. So when there when there is a water logged condition, so uh, definitely it will get infected by fungi or any. It it, it is a one of the uh, what is that uh, congenial environment for growth of any of the pathogenic uh, uh, fungi or bacteria? So, hence water logging is avoided for even for banana and also for papaya. So, for any uh, for general sake, any of the fruit crop also, <clears throat> any of the crops water logging is uh, have to be avoided. So, breeding is difficult, complicated because of you know that <clears throat> what are the we, uh, what were the complicated associated with that is parthenocarpy sterility and polyploidy. So, hence. <clears throat> Uh, bidding is difficult for um, uh, its uh, crop improvement. 
and low seed germination has uh, has been overcome by embryo culture technique that is okay even the ihr has standard embryo culture technique for elaki bale i will be giving those things in the notes <coughs> and these uh, plantains are uh, uh, this is one of the important thing the plantains of cooking marana they belong uh, they, they are the photoperiodically long day uh, uh, long day crops and the table types so they are day neutral okay this is you have to remember this thing and actually uh, actually to say actually there is no proper evidence for photoperiodic uh, uh, availability of uh, i mean photoperiodic utilization of mana but there is a little in one or two literature it is mentioned that plantains are long day and table crops are day neutral so we know that it's a monocartilaginous and monocarpic crop what is monocarpic one polycarpic monocarpic means it has got only one life cycle so when there is an emergence of inflorescence the growth is terminated okay the vegetative growth terminates and also the life cycle ends with inflorescence even you know, this type of uh, the cropping uh, that is uh, uh, the the habit is also seen in bamboo so the bamboo i think you might be aware uh, once after 50 or 60 years it will flower after that it will die okay so moving forward so the propagation so uh, you know that the sword suckers are ideal for uh, propagation that uh, sword suckers of uh, that which bears actually and the ideal size is 1.5 to 2 kg so this is uh, the one which is used for uh, now propagation <clears throat> just a minute okay so and uh, the smaller ones are called as bits and peepers okay and this is one of the terminology you should be aware of this so this is the one uh, major difference uh, this is very much important practically also so when you go to the field you should be in a position to identify which are the ones that is the sword sucker or which is the water sucker okay so the water sucker means that will be very much slender so there is no okay if it will like a tube it will be there so there is no much uh, and even the leaves leaves are also the contrasting characters here so here the only the wider leaves are there okay so but here the sword sucker the leaves are also tapery hence it is called as sword even the rhizome is also tapery it look like a uh, cone shaped uh, inverted cone shape and also the leaves leaves are very much narrow so don't be confused even if you go to field you will be, uh, feel like the, when the leaves are tapery and uh, narrow we will it is general uh, perception would be it might be a due to diseases but not in the case of this so this is the clear cut identification of sword sucker okay and he, here i want to say one thing what what are these blotches that we are seeing here no on the leaves that is the, the i think purplish to blackish blotches and it will be looking like a that is a blight symptoms so this is not a blight symptom this is the contrasting character of the cultivar grand name okay you just please remember this i had one very good photo that means last week i went and i took i will be sharing in the group okay don't worry so this is one of the contrasting characters of the juvenile character okay juvenile character of the uh, grand name variety so moving forward with spacing so here also important the spacing that called dwarf cavendish cavendish robusta and grand what are the uh, dwarf growing cultivars are uh, planted in the, 1.8 into 1.8 meters that is also suitable for hdp and the ones that are grown that is uh, that means the tall growing cultivar that is po one montan rastali nendran and hilbaram these are usually plantains okay so these things are grown in a spacing of 2.2 into or 3.3 meters okay you, you just remember this and what is the plant population in the mango mango class i have clearly told that to remember at least to remember one of the few crops that is which are the important crop spacing that is uh, spacing and and also plant population of those crops okay so 1.8 and 1.8 how many plants are accumulated per hectare area i have given the formula last time and and i also shown how it is uh, okay calculated okay please go through it and please remember so uh, for hdp we know that it's 1.5 and 1.5 meter <clears throat> and coming to different systems of planting <clears throat> how uh, how it is planted in the field okay it is generally okay garden land wetland perennial padugai or hill counter this is one of the thing that is asked question okay perennial or padugai system so here usually in the garden land wetland we will be uh, planting it in the raised beds okay so here in the perennial or padugai system so uh, uh, pits are made okay the pits are made pits are dug out just like we do it for uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, mango or any coconut so uh, pits are made pits are uh, dug and uh, yeah and the potting mixture has been filled uh, or the soil is filled and and it is planted okay this is for perennial types and also for hill and hilly region hilly areas of that is a western ghats and all counter system is practiced okay so and then this is one of the important thing so what are the compatible crops that is brinjal or cucurbits are not recommended for inter crops in banana okay why because they act as a source of host of the uh, 
what is that this is causing uh, organisms okay so this uh, when the banana or cucurbits cucurbits are actually uh, uh, hub of actually what is the every type of pest will come for cucurbit either uh, it's a sucking pest or uh, okay achieving and biting type okay they will if the pits will come on test on the they act as alternate hosts and they will transfer the diseases okay so this banana or cucurbits are strictly not recommended and <clears throat> if there if there is if, if there is utilization of uh, place to be done means so the short duration crops of amaranthus turmeric yam cabbage and also reddish spinach and other root uh, i mean other legume crops are grown so generally uh, practically if you're saying means even the turmeric also it is not that much okay uh, uh, appropriate okay because it is an exhaustive crop ginger and turmeric it, it exhaust all nutrients even banana also one of the very much uh, nutrient raw loving crop okay so root crops are actually which i feel that is not good i okay the suitable ones are so very short durable that is uh, leafy vegetables like spinach and legume legume crops is one of the biggest advantage it will fix the nitrogen okay atmospheric nitrogen is fixed and it makes the soil fertile you, you can go for spinach or also legume crops okay and the special inter intercultural operations of banana this is the what the peculiar uh, uh, i mean uh, what is the that is the unique to this crop now okay so these things are whatever the things which are unique to that crop so those things have to be remembered okay Uh, remembered uh, remembered thoroughly so in the mango uh, i said no no less several uh, the, like operation that is alternate bearing or uh, any other things have come so in the same uh, thing like banana for banana also there are the operations that is desuckering that is you know that uh, the removal of suckers so you know that the plant rhizome contains several auxiliary buds in the roots uh, so th those will emerge as suckers so many suckers will emerge even actually For one ten to twelve, if you if it is left unmaintained, so many number even for ten to I have seen almost twenty suckers uh, produced from one mother plant. Okay, so one only one needs to be retained. Why? Because because of the nutrient diversion to avoid nutrient diversion. Okay, so one sucker is uh, retained, and uh, it is uh, the desuckering uh, operation has to be done once in a, uh, once in forty five days interval. Okay, and propping is nothing but giving support. So. uh banana sir you know the slowdo slowdo is very much slender and when the time of bunch emergence means even the bunches only sometimes uh, 10 to 15 i have seen even the 25 to 28 kg bunches also so if the slowdo is very, very uh, slender and the bunch is more means there is a possibility of drooping and falling down for falling down and, and breakage of the plant so for that propping is essential and earthing up is done because it's the slender and also it has got tap root system and roots are so uh, Uh, situated uh, in the superficially upper portion of the plant i mean uh, upper portion of the soil so i think up is very much essential to make it as a support okay so done in drainage season and in the, it also uh, acts as a proper drainage and also avoid water logging okay and mulching is with the uh, organic or inorganic mulch we know that the importance of mulching and what is the role of organic or inorganic i mean that uh, black polythene mul mulch or uh, plastic mulch and wrapping or bunch covering when there there is a time of bunch uh, emergence the giving protection is also very much important okay not in the case of uh, uh, each and every time okay only when there is a uh, strict demand that is for uh, ex export type and all okay for that uh, this bunch covering is very much essential that just to you look the uniform okay you know that the roadside vendors the, those roads will not be having those uniform but when you go to malls like mores or more uh, what is that uh, big bazaar and all there will be fruits are very much uniform no okay so those are covered fruits okay bunch covered fruits this protect from uh, sunburn wind dust and also it is practiced in nendran and cavan dish to, uh, to get yeah attractive colored fruit because there are fruits are these fruits are very much lengthier no so uh, for that lengthier fruit if there is any spots or any other things are there means so this is one of the problem there is a possibility of rejection of uh, those things in the market so so whatever the black spot that you see no that is actually Uh, are the freckles of what is that the uh, any tiny particles of wind or dirt when there is a, if if they come in contact at the time of fruit development if they come and uh, hit to that uh, in the initial stage it will be tender and it will be damaged and so that and when it grow up so it is the result of the, uh, those things okay so uh, denameling also it's one of the important operation here i i am coming sequentially okay first is desuckering propping supporting you know, according to the Uh, crop uh, agronomical uh, operations okay this occurring propping earthing up mulching wrapping and uh, denaving that is remove removal of the male bud after removal of the male bud it can be used as a vegetable okay and also bunch feeding this is one of the important technique 
it is done after dna will only okay after the male body is removed bunch feeding technology this is this is also have been developed by ihr only so here what is uh, what, what is done now so cow dung will be cow dung will be taken and uh, for cow dung urea and also potash and along, along with that micronutrients if necessary it can, it can be applied so those things were taken in a polythene bag and at the cut end it is dipped the cut end is immersed and the bag is tightly tied okay so that is bunch covering that it has grown i i, I sorry it has had shown that the yield is increased by 50% due to is okay when you give directly to the here also you know that potassium is very much essential for fruit quality characters and also urea so more application of urea is not recommended only 2 to 5 grams is only enough and with the cordon acts acts as a media and it's also you know that cordon is oh, it contains many number of nutrients and also um, that uh, repellent properties of fresh and uh, etc so this has uh, promised uh, of by promised for promised of yielding more than 23% uh, the yield yield might increase due to this and this is last operation it is motocking it is cutting of the mother plant i mean once the bunch is harvested the plant uh, the, that old uh, the plants uh, uh, stem have is cut and uh, it is left okay and it's cut at the bottom and uh, even though there is if there is any uh, yeah the, the kerosene or something is poured and which avoids uh the what is that which avoids uh, uh the any resting of any um, that killing of any insecticidal sorry insect uh, egg or pupae it will be killed and hence yeah this motoring have operations is uh, has to be uh, done and that will after that it will help for the sucker to form and uh, uh, that, that sucker uh, that will result in a new plant so pseudo stem of plantains okay <clears throat> this is these are also one of the things uh, that means con contrasting uh, features that's Plantains has got yellowish green pseudostem with brown blotches and the pseudostem of the table bananas, that is sweet bananas. So those are, uh, the pseudostem has got green to dark green color with black blotches, okay. When you see the any images, you will get an idea. And uh, inflorescence emerges from large underground pseudostem, okay, from uh, 10 to 15 months after planting, okay. If you know that is one of the uh, crop that takes almost one year, okay. After one year, that will emerge and uh, prolong for about 16 months. Or 17 months based on the variety so inflorescence emerges from the underground portion that is from even the root you know that it has got pseudostem pseudostem means false stem only rhizome is there and then pseudostem what is the pseudostem actually it's a, a, a curvature of leaves okay so even the leaves uh, stem, leaf lamina have been uh, uh, curled and it has formed the pseudostem okay so below the uh, uh, what is that pseudostem the inflorescence the the bud has got inflorescence that will emerge out of the pseudostem and leaves are rolled tightly anti-clockwise this rolling in nature is known as varnation so please note on all this important terminologies okay so the, there also one got bits and papers <coughs> here uh, varnation this is uh, one of the, le uh, the uh, leaf rolling uh, criteria is called as varnation and the leaves are unfurled at the rate of one per week that is one per week or 10 days i have observed as per i observed it also depends on the conditions okay even if there is more prolong prolongation of cold means that will uh, the leaf won't unfurl okay so unfurl at the rate of one per week and the time interval between production of two successive leaves that is called as philocron the philo means we know that it is a leaf okay philocron it is the time period between emergence of two successive leaves and at this uh, this is mag uh, and when there is a maximum size of leaf that is climax leaf so the banana leaf is one of the not one of them. it is it is the exclusively largest leaf in the world okay which is largest fruit bearing crop that is jackfruit okay so here uh, when there is a maximum when when, when it is a maximum when it is in maximum size the leaf of money is maximum in the world among any other crops it has got the largest leaves okay and these are the types of leaves actually you have to remember this thing this is one of the important also it, it, it will be asked in the exams this flag leaf that is newly formed leaf or or smallest leaf uh, that is formed that is called as flag leaf and it just formed near the inflorescence actually after the flag leaf the inflorescence will uh, shoot out so this is flag leaf that is climax leaf that is largest leaf is known as climax leaf and cigar leaf you might be seeing uh, when you see the banana plant some some leaves were curled okay uh, they they are about to emerge the leaves okay they will emerge after some time so those leaves are cigar leaves uh, these are the images so i think you have seen this uh, everybody have seen this type of leaves that is now after the, the, this will unfurl and uh, spread like this so this is cigar leaf and uh, this is the flag leaf okay this is one of the smallest leaf you know
so these are the ones smallest leaves after that the, it will give uh, protection to the bunch or the, it will shade the bunch and this is the climax leaf that is the largest leaf any of the largest leaf in the plant it is here in this plant this is the largest leaf so this is the climax leaf okay so please be uh, aware of these things that is cigar leaf flag leaf and also climax leaf and so, so moving so forward it suckers uh, produced in the clumps okay so in the clumps uh, when it is produced you, so you will be observing no many number of suckers will be residing at only one place so, so that uh, that portion is known as mat or stool okay so they are actually auxiliary buds of rhizomes and root system transferred into inflorescence when 11th last leaf is produced so this is one of the important thing so so the root meristem that is present in undergrowth i know i said it is a monocarpic fruit or sorry monocarpic crop so what is monocarpic uh, vegetative growth and it will terminate after shooting no so until the emergence of 11th last leaf produced the vegetative whatever the vegetative growth it will seize us and the root meristem since the main uh, what is that uh, uh, the upper part is pseudostem and the emeristem present in the underground root that root meristem that is transformed that is changed into uh, inflorescence and from that the inflorescence start to emerge and after uh, that the reproductive phase will start okay this is the physiological aspects you have to remember this thing and the immature inflorescence effort as bell okay so immature inflorescence and also uh, sometimes the male bud also so both have got a uh, uh, similar terminal that is uh, bell okay so so this is one of the important thing that we'll ask in the exam that is uh, what are the positions of the flowers that in in, in inflorescence okay in the proximal end okay in the upper portion okay uh banana shoot is bent uh, downward okay it has got the negative geotropism when it is bent okay i'm not talking about the shooting uh, upward okay when it is bent now so during that time whatever the flowers in the proximal that is in the upper portion those are the female fruits so and also whatever the fruits uh, i mean the flowers are present in the middle portion are, are bisexual flowers and also at the distal and at the tip okay whatever the flowers that is are present in the tip are are, are male flowers okay so just uh, male flowers at the tip we will be knowing that it will be uh, we are aware of that and hermaphrodite uh, comes after that and also male at the other uh, other tip of the inflorescence okay so this you have to remember and each fruit is a berry okay that is known as a finger uh, as i said and the clusters of the finger is known as hand and the collection of hand is known as bunch okay so these are the terminals i think everyone of uh, them are aware so i think we had it has got something problem in the animation okay so 10 to 15 leaves are seen in a healthy plant okay uh, in a uh, okay normally duration crop okay healthy grown uh, cultivated plants okay 10 to 15 leaves are seen and 9 to function 9 to 10 function leaves are required to uh, form a bunch okay so this is one of the very much important thing because those amount of the whatever the amount of the photosynthetes have to be required to produce a bunch that is uh, those things have been supplied by 9 to 10 functional leaves okay this is one of the important thing and a total of 30 to 65 leaves are produced by plants we will cut them or uh, otherwise they will wither okay that is the, not the issue but if it is le left means that if it is counted at the time of one to last means total of 30 to 65 leaves may be produced okay this is not important so this is yeah i think uh, yeah uh, these are the seeds of banana so many of them might not be seeing these things so yeah this is uh, even in the last time indian science congress in, which was held in our campus i have seen actually you won't believe it was uh, even the bigger than the copy okay you know though copy and all you it will be the you no know, beans okay even bigger seeds are uh, uh, sometimes bear from uh, different cultivars okay these are the seeds of banana so fruit development and maturity so it is we know that it's parthenocarpic and mediated by so uh, why it is parthenocarpic and uh, the parthenocarpic mechanism is actually mediated by uh, production of auxins okay those auxins stimulates parthenocarpy and uh, pollination occur but it's parthenocarpic but uh, there is a stimulatory parthenocarpy okay and it also require high levels of potassium and edible portion is mesocarp plus endocarp okay uh, you have to go through it whatever the first class i said no about uh, the uh, what is that uh, fruit uh, basic edible portions and all what is exocarp mesocarp epicarp if you are aware if you are thorough with that those things this is the edible portion is mesocarp and endocarp and what is pericarp that is peel okay okay and the seeds of wild banana is actually 3 to 16 millimeter wide i said no it's almost more than that of kopi okay kopi or any beans will come no more than that, that uh, the beans will be there so this is climactic fruit 
it means it's ripe even after harvesting so the fruit left on plants ripe much slower than the fruits harvested at maturity hence it is a general uh, tendency you know whenever the bunches are matured uh, the people will uh, see and uh, go through it and uh, after that they will cut the bunch and they will store it in a room okay after that the fruit will start to mature faster so why it, it will uh, ripen slower in the plants mean because of some inhibitors that is due to hormones only okay at that level it is not required so moving forward and the low temperature at the time of flowering this is one of the very much important thing that has been asked many times that is choke throat okay so when there is a low temperature it is less than 10 degrees uh, the bud may not emerge it is sorry it's spelling mistake but may not emerge from the pseudo stem it is known as it, that condition is known as choke throat okay so the bunch that the, whatever i said no monocarpic crop uh, the uh, vegetative phase will uh, the bud will transform into uh, uh, that uh, inflorescence after 11 the 11th leaf at, at that time if there is a prevalence of low temperature the bud will not shoot out okay from the root it has to come okay so if there is a prevalence of less than 10 degrees there is not emergence and this choke throat condition is actually technically meaning the bunch become trapped in the pseudo stem at various stages of emergence so there might be emerging it, it is emerging and if suddenly if there is temperature of 10 degrees celsius and it is trapped there only okay at that stage there is no emergence of so what is that inflorescence and also the root growth also sees at a temperature of that is less than 13 degrees celsius means the root growth also hinders okay hence it is a typical uh, more than 15 it is grown just only at the rate of 15 to 35 no so uh, hence a typical humid tropical uh, environment is required so moving forward with uh, post harvest i think uh, yeah it has gone we almost it's one hour 20 minutes so ripening and post harvest management the total crop duration is 6 to 16 months that is based on variety i think uh, no, i know i i even i haven't seen the crop that has come for 16 months or six months so usually the uh for any 10 to 11 months or 12 months uh, vegetative growth will occur and after shooting uh, it will occur and now for two to three three months after that uh, the the bunches will emerge and uh, for ripening and all it, it takes almost uh, yeah 14 to 16 months dwarf bananas will will be ready at 11 to 14 months and also tall cultivars little less than uh, sorry little more than that is 14 to 60 months and the bunch takes almost 90 to 150 days so almost three to three and a half months or four months based on where it is for to mature after shooting okay and also maturity index okay here we can see visualize we can visualize and also biochemically also we can be measured Visual, uh, visualizing is that is color change and also disappearance of angularity whatever the lines that is the margins are present in the outer uh, fruit surface no that will uh, tend to disappear and disappearance this disappearance of uh, this angularity has got some stages okay so that stage is three fourth grade light three fourth grade full three fourth and also full grade okay so for distant uh, uh, market transportation it is harvested at three fourth grade that is first grade okay that is this is not please remember this is not the grade of fruit okay this is the grade of the disappearance of angularity that is the grade of judging maturity okay so for distant uh, things harvested at three fourth grade that is three four disappearance of angularity it means and the closer for any local markets at that three fourth uh, i mean full three fourth this this one okay at this stage it is transferred and ripening is associated with change of color flavor and also texture okay so these changes will occur at, rip, uh, at the ripening process and this is one of the important thing that is uh, uh, what is the peculiar to banana you have to note it down <clears throat> the scale used to describe the ripeness of the fruit that is log scale scale okay l o e s c k log scale okay i don't know how you may pronounce it okay so this is the one which has that indicates the degree of ripeness okay <clears throat> at all how is how the ripening process is ta uh, taken stage wise okay okay color one two three four five six seven you don't need to remember all those uh what is description okay at least remember the lowest case scale that, that consists of seven stages okay and these are the ones indicated here so artificial ripening we know that uh, inducing ripening in uh, uh, by using ethylene is uh, done in banana so it has it is done either in either way that is uh, using two chlorethyl phosphonic acid that liberates ethylene gas so we will put the NaOH pellets in a bowl okay two to three NaOH pellets and we will add this one what is two chlorethyl phosphonic acid it is also ethylene only this one and if it is left in a closed chamber for 12 to 18 hours uh, the ripening will take the ripening process will take express and this also help in, help in degreening okay the green ones may become the, the chlorophyll will denature and uh, the carotenoids will express 
and also by another method that is dipping in ethereal that is what the generally the farmers of our area and what all the <clears throat> or any places that is this is one of the cheaper method so this is this method is practiced uh, dipping of punches in 10000 ppm of ethereal for 10 seconds so what is 10000 ppm so 10000 milligram sorry millimeter or mg 10000 mg in 1 liter okay so 1 mg in 1 liter is 1 ppm so this also you will please uh, you, you go through those things also so ihr got uh, developed a new uh, what is it low cost mana ripening chamber and those pics i will show uh, or I, I will uh, uh, add, I will add it in the notes and I will uh, give it in the group. So don't worry, I will be showing them in the notes only. I mean, in the present coming classes. Okay, and the grade, the commercial grade which is class one and class two grades. Okay, so so these things only required for the export purpose. Okay, in the here locally, nobody will grade. Okay, so the packing of hands that is in 100 gauge polythene bags with 0.2% holes helps in enhancing the shelf life. Okay, so why this holes, holes is to be done uh, is to be there because of the respiration. Hence, we will not just keep this uh, uh, fruit in the fridge, fridge no refrigerator no. So because it will undergo chilling injury, just like mango. Okay, whatever the things that will undergo chilling injury is kept outside the refrigerator. So storage of 13 degrees Celsius is recommended. I also said in the earlier class that is mango, mango, banana, and also anthurium. Okay, those things. I mean, those crops require storage of 30, 13 degrees Celsius. And uh, for banana, for with uh, this temperature and also with 85 to 95% RH, uh, we can expect a prolonged storage life of three weeks, okay? So, okay. What is chilling injury, I think? Yeah, I know that chilling injury means when there is stored in the uh, low temperature, the tissue will, uh, the, the moisture content will be uh, uh will be frozen and the tissue will damage okay that is chilling injury so so important diseases here uh, whatever the diseases that is uh, very much important only you have to remember and, and definitely please remember all the scientific name of these things also fusarium will fusarium axis porum leaf uh, spot or cigatoka uh, leaf in the cigatoka there are two types okay don't worry i will give uh, a, a brief of uh, these things in the uh, next classes cordonal is anthracnose cigar and rot this is the uh, this is which is a peculiar to banana and bacterial soft rot bacterial weld and bbtv this is the these are the viral uh, so first one two three four five so these five uh, diseases are uh, what is the fungal diseases and these two are bacterial diseases that is bacterial soft rot that is caused due to arvenia and moco weld this is also one of the serious disease and these are the viral diseases okay banana bunchy top virus that is uh, the vector are aphids so when there are alternate hosts or any uh, weeds are there no so this is one of the uh, uh dangers we can expect that is spread through aphids and also infectious chlorosis virus okay icv that is also transmitted through aphids and banana streak virus they can be trans uh, transmitted by infected planting materials or also by mini bugs okay and also banana black mosaic okay bbmv so or it is also known as cocon disease okay you just remember those things and uh, whatever the resistant or susceptible varieties and also their scientific name i will definitely give in the next class so important pests okay pseudostem borer rhizome those scientific names are also very much important okay uh, cosmopolitan sorted as that is a rhizome with pseudostem borer uh, and also banana pit that is pentelonia nigrona rosa okay and also nematodes in the nematodes there is a uh, borrowing nematode and root knot nematode and also another nematode is there i will give it so this briefing about pnd and i will cover in the next class okay so i think this is enough for today and uh, before we wind up so i think somebody of you i think any of you have read the news in the last week okay so the astronauts in the iss that is international space station the nasa astronauts they have done an experiment and they have raised a uh, radish crop okay so this is one of the uh, that is update for your interest i have put this so please be updated with all those things whatever the news that will come okay you know whatever the institutes that may release uh, any uh, updated varieties and all Okay, please be aware of that. What is the first space grown crop? That is actually lettuce, okay? And the first space grown flower is Xenia. So like that, uh, experiments have been uh, undertaken. Uh, it is undergoing in space. And also, uh, if, there is, if there are any updates, uh, news will be releasing those things. You just please note it down, okay? So, so yeah, this is about today. So any doubts or any clarifications, please let me know. Was it audible throughout the session? There were no interruptions, right? Hello? 
No sir. Yeah. Okay. If there is any doubts, uh, please. Uh, okay. You can also. I think it's one hour thirty minutes. You can. Yeah. You can. Uh, you can text me. Uh, I mean. I mean. You can discuss. You can share your doubts in groups. Okay. I will answer them, and also I will. Uh, uh, I think. Yeah. One of the thing. I think. Uh, oh, yeah. She left. I think. Okay. Now, in last time, somebody has got got one doubt. Okay. Don't. No problem. I think I will explain it in the next class, or I will clear in the group only. Okay. Shall we wind up for today? Okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you all. Take care and uh, please read well. And uh, I think yeah, tomorrow and day after tomorrow also, I think fruits is there. And uh, I will let you know because I am having some work. So okay, I I I won't I won't be able to take class for one day. Okay, I don't know if if there is a possibility, I will take. And uh, if if it is not, I will inform. And and don't worry about the classes. I will cover each and every class and each and every missed class. <clears throat> okay. So okay, uh, okay. I think we shall wind up. Okay. Good night.